Welcome to the Moto IQ Garage, and in this segment we're going to be looking at the VQ37 VHR. This is a really hard engine to modify, and not too many people have had good luck with it, but we're going to give it a shot. I think we're going to make some really good power here. So starting off with the bottom end of the engine, we have some very special pistons. These pistons are made by Jim Wolf Technology. Uh, they're made out of a 2618 alloy, nice and tough. It has a good cam design on the skirt, so even though it's 2618, an alloy that expands a lot with uh, heat, and you have to run a, a wider piston to wall clearance, these pistons will run fairly quietly. The JWT pistons have some unique features. First off, they're 12 and a half to 1 compression. It's kind of high for a street motor, but uh, we plan to use flex fuel on this engine and run it on E85 or 91. Now, they can still be tuned for 91, it just doesn't make the best power. Uh, it'll run the best on E85. So, to get the 12.5 to 1 compression, the pistons have a fairly high dome. One of the things about the VHR engine is it doesn't really have an intake cam, and it has infinitely variable valve events. As the piston's in close proximity to the head, the valves can be pretty wide open depending on what's going on. So on the intake side, it has to have really big valve reliefs as you see here. Th these are way bigger valve reliefs than you typically see on any VQ engine, but that's because you can get pretty quick opening events and the, and the valves can come close to the piston. Um, another cool feature is JWT adds this uh, fire slot in between the uh, valve pockets on the top of the dome. These valve pockets are really deep so they can kind of quench some of the flame travel when the piston's near top dead center. So JWT found that if they have this like fire slot, it helps flame propagation across the top of the combustion chamber uh, right near top dead center. That's a cool feature. You won't find that in any other piston and it adds a few horsepower. For connecting rods, we're running K1 rods. The rod is machined from a blank that's actually a near net shape forging. This allows really good grain flow around the big end of the rod. A lot of rods that are made out of uh, forged blanks, uh, it's, the blank is actually shaped like the rod and the bore is un, not there. So you get the advantage of forging, but the grain flows straight and when you cut the bore, it's still kind of straight. With a K1 rod, the forging die actually has the hole in there, so the grain flows around the uh, big end of the rod. So you get like more strength, uh, more even uh, flex distribution, so your bearing life could potentially be better, probably better fatigue life too. Uh, the K1 rods are shot peened, and the machining is very precise, so the balance is really good. Typically, they're all within uh, within the grams so you don't have to balance them, but we, we do anyway. The K1 rods also come with ARP bolts, which are the industry standard for really good bolts. On this engine, we're running the stock Nissan crankshaft. The stock crank is plenty strong. It has generous journal size, so you get a lot of bearing area. It's a good crank. It can hold a lot of power, and the power we're generating with this natural aspirated build is well within its capabilities. The bottom end of the engine is really straightforward. Nissan has a really strong bottom end um, on this engine and the uh, HR version of the VQ. The engine has what's called a bed plate. So instead of having your traditional main caps, you have this whole integrated lower skirt structure of the block. And it has uh, four bolts holding each main down, bolts holding it to the block. It's all thick, really strong really reinforced. This is really stiff and can take a lot of power. This is like something you see normally in diesel or truck engines or uh, bespoke race engines. It's, it's a really good feature. To hold the bottom end together, we're using ARP studs. One of the reasons why we like ARP studs is that they're a high strength stud. They're not torque to yield like the stock stuff. And when you're building a uh, close tolerance blueprinted bottom end, we assemble and disassemble the bottom end several times to get the select fit bearings right, to get the precise oil clearance. So we can do that and not really worry about uh, permanently yielding the fastener and potentially weakening it. Uh, the ARP stud is a lot stronger than the stock one and it has higher tensile and yield strength too, so that's good to keep the bottom end together. Some of the tricks we've done on this engine there are just our normal 
assembly tricks is we sent the entire rotating assembly out to be balanced. Now with good quality pistons like the JWT piston and the K1 rods, normally those are really tight tolerance and they're not really out of balance, but we sent them out to get checked and corrected if needed. Uh, we also send the Nissan crank out and get it dynamically balanced. Another trick we do is WPC treatment. Now we WPC'd the crank, uh, treated the journals and everything for less friction and longer life. Uh, we also WPC treated the camshafts and the small end of the rod and the piston pin. We also did the rings too. All these things are tricks to reduce friction and increase life. So the difficult to modify part of the VHR engine is the cylinder head. Now uh, the, the VHR engine has Nissan's uh, VVEL variable cam timing system and it's not even a cam. It's on the intake valve and it actually uses a complicated rocker assembly and as it turns it, it actually causes a reciprocating motion like that and by moving the fulcrum through here electronically you can totally change the cam lift and duration. The advantage of this is you can get some really va radical valve motion. You can bang the valve open, bang it shut, have a lot of area under the curve. The bad part is it's hard to modify and there's like a lot of weird moving parts here with a lot of mass. It creates a lot of heat, a lot of oil temperature, and it's a lot of monkey motion and it's also really confusing. But you can actually, through electronics and tuning, get the advantages of a race cam without actually having to get a cam. So everything is on the exhaust cam. The GWT makes an exhaust cam with more lift and duration and that goes on this side. The exhaust side is a conventional VQ valve train. So we're going to be changing the exhaust cam, leaving the intake side alone and messing with it electronically. For the cylinder head, we were basically not doing a whole lot. The ports on the VHR is very similar to the uh, HR version of the VQ, which is an excellent port design, flows a lot. Uh, we've done a few things though. Uh, one of the things is we've done the valve job on the new and valve machine. This is a CNC type valve machine that doesn't use cutters. And what it does is it creates a continuous radius from the combustion chamber into the uh, intake port. It's one smooth, good flowing radius. And, and then, then it kind of cuts the valve seating surface. So another thing it does is it completely matches the seats to the port wall. So most of the uh, flow in a modified head is in the valve seat area. So with a new end machine, you're getting a lot of the advantages of a fully ported head in just the valve job. You open up the, the seat diameter, you have a smooth radius, and you blend the valve seat into the port. Uh, one of the things we've also done is we've kind of touched up the edge of the top cut to the combustion chamber and the bottom part of the cut by hand, so it's a smooth radius all the way. Now we're getting probably about 80% of the flow of a fully ported head by doing this. It's a one cool, smooth operation. Another trick we've done, uh, this is from Jim Wolf Technologies recommendation, is we've used the exhaust valves from a Titan truck. Now these actually fit. The valves are like one millimeter bigger in diameter than stock. And the other cool thing is they have a sodium filled stem. The sodium actually goes into the, uh, the valve face. The sodium pulls a lot of the heat out of the valve and a lot of the heat out of the combustion chamber. And usually the valve in the exhaust valve area is the hottest part of the cylinder head, has the most propensity to detonate. You're actually reducing the detonation threshold by using these sodium valves. It's all really cool stuff, OEM technology. Sometimes OEMs have better technology than the aftermarket. On this side of the head, um, of course, since we're running all the factory variable uh, timing, we're running the stock valve springs and retainers. I mean, that's about the best you can do. On the exhaust side, since we're running a, a bigger cam, uh, we're running Jim Wolf Technology springs. Now these are a beehive spring. Uh, they have more travel before coil line and they just work really well. 
Um, Jim Wolf matches the harmonics of the spring to the uh, cam profile acceleration characteristics, so they have a lot of area under the curve for uh, the amount of valve spring tension you have, so less friction, less likely to float, and the most area under the curve to make the good power. Hence the league is always a trick on the high performance engine, and Jim Wolf technology has found some surprising secrets that seem counterintuitive, but they actually have proven results. Now typically, you run some multi-layer steel gasket and you clamp it down really hard with ARP studs. This works really good on a lot of engines, but what Jim Wolf discovered is when you do this, it actually distorts the valve seat and you lose uh, valve sealing. So you leak down a lot worse and everything's torqued together. So what Jim Wolf has found to make the most power and have the longest life is to run all the stock stuff. So this means a stock OEM Nissan head gasket, which actually isn't a bad deal. It's multi-layer stainless with an extra clamping layer around the bore so you get extra sealing pressure around the bore. It's the next best thing, the folded stopper layer, and it's actually a pretty high performance gasket that works well. To get away uh, with the issue of over torquing the head and distorting the casting and distorting the valve seats, uh, GWT found that with, for the best leak down numbers and everything, the stock torque to yield head bolts work the best. So we're ready Genuine Nissan uh, torque to yield bolts brand new because these could only be reused a couple of times before they take a set and, and, and they won't hold the proper torque. But Counterintuitive, it actually works. In the case of this engine, OEM is better. One of the weak points of this engine, like all, all the engines of the VQ family, is the oil pump gears. Now if you're revving into the 8,000 RPM range, your oil pump gears can tend to break. So uh, we're gonna be running some billet oil pump gears on this engine, but uh, we don't have them here. But uh, that's one of the things we're gonna be doing. I hope you enjoyed this look of our build of the Nissan VQ37 VHR. It's a very unique engine. We hope to make some decent power. We're aiming for the high 300 wheel horsepower range. We'll see pretty soon. If you want us to build your engine, go to MotoIQ.com and click on the garage link at the top of the page. Fill out the form there and we'll reply to you with a quote. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this engine build and we're going to be doing some more of these. and. We'll see you soon.